Hey folks, it's the Rand Gang, back to the Crash Bandicoot Warp No Damage Run. Time to go on a bit of a gem-collecting marathon as we begin in level 23, Flaming Passion. It's the Arabian Nights once again. Yeah, we've pretty much come to the end of the new level themes that we're going to be seeing in this game, unfortunately. The last new one was Engine on the Moon. And I'm not even really sure how that fits time travel, really. There's so many of the themes I could have gone with. But oh well. That's neither here nor there. As the level's name would suggest, we've got plenty of arsonists trying to burn the bridges that we're trying to cross, and a lot of swordsmen that this time around don't have as much platform to walk across, so you have less time to try and get your attack in to take them out. You of course also have your fruit bazooka, which is good for taking out enemies from a distance, if you choose to do so, and thanks to your double jump and death tornado spin, you can pretty much bypass the magic carpets too if you want, though I don't find that as hard. And you can also use your fruit bazooka to take out the arsonists. I find this amusing. That'll learn you to blow up bridges. But that is one thing I kind of wish they had fixed about the fruit bazooka. As it is, you can basically just spam shoot the thing to your heart's content. And in that sense, I feel like it's a little broken, especially since you can take out enemies from a distance using it. I think it would have been cool if they had uh, made it so that the number of wampa fruit that you have collected acted as your ammo making it harder to accumulate extra lives if you did decide to go along just shooting everything in your path. Though I suppose that would have created some issues later on down the road that required the Fruit Bazooka to complete certain challenges. So, maybe it wouldn't have worked? I don't know. I just feel like there ought to be an ammo limit on the Fruit Bazooka, that's all. Anyway, head on up. See what I mean right here? They have so little walking space, and you have so little time to attack them. That could make things a little dicey. In the wrong situation. Whoa! Nearly walked right into that. This is a rare instance where you actually get to kill an arsonist with your spin attack. We'll check out the death route in just a moment, but... First, I need to take out this box, and as you can see here, we've just got a couple of uh, magic carpets, another swordsman after that, and a stack of crates. Not really missing much in that direction. So, time to go die! This death route is going to introduce us to a new enemy type. Here's a lab assistant that's throwing swords at us from a distance. Jump the sword, get up to him, and uh, he's not really too much of an issue if you can uh, time your jumps carefully. Got a couple of uh, arsonists throwing their jars in unison, and we have metal checkpoint crates, which means there are no wooden crates on this path that we need to deal with. Which is kind of curious, because this path reconvenes with the main route. It doesn't end like all the other death routes in this game do, so they could have put wooden crates on this death route, and it wouldn't have affected anything, I don't think. But, oh well. Mind your timing as you jump across here. Alright, just one more sword-throwing lab assistant to get past. Scimitar, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do a double jump to get over that last one, so that you don't accidentally land on it, and here's the green gem. Curiously, there is a colored gem on each of the death routes in all of the Arabian levels in this game. I, I find that rather interesting. Anyway, here's that big stack of crates we saw before. And the swordsman, who was right, behind, right in front of them. And beyond that will be the two carpets that we saw flying in a circle. So, yeah, we didn't actually go very far from the death route the entrance. Short platform here, so take him out quickly. And let's move forward. Alright, time to head down the bonus. We've got more nitro crates that we're going to need to deal with, and bear in mind, like I said back in Gone Tomorrow, 
there are, there is not going to be a green exclamation box at the end of the level, so the game expects you to take these things out with your group bazooka. If you don't take out those nitro crates, you will not get credit for them and you will not get your uh, co box completion gem. So make sure you're taking these things out. Now, how did I land on this? Game physics! And of course, you might be wondering how you ex expected to take out these bounce crates that you have to bounce on. If you spun them, you would die. Well, again, Fruit Bazooka. They gave you a gun and they expect you to use it, darn it. Though I do like that idea there. And that's all there is to that. Alright. Just waiting on that arsonist there. Yeah, I could just shoot these guys and make the this whole thing a non-issue, but uh, I don't really want to. I don't really use the fruit bazooka all that much. It's not my, uh... It's it's fun thing to use, I'll certainly give it that, but it's not my first choice of getting through platform levels. Ugh. Okay, we're not gonna bother with that Wampa Fruit, I guess. And as you can see up ahead, we've pretty much made it to the end of the level. And there's our box completion gem. We are done here. We're done with Flaming Passion, but we are not done with this video just yet. Anyway, there's our crystal, one gem, and two gems. But we've still got work to do back in Gone Tomorrow now that we have the green gem, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back in Gone Tomorrow, and now that we have the green gem, the green gem path has been filled in. So, let's visit the road not followed. Now, as I had previously mentioned when we were back in Gone Tomorrow, there were a few boxes that we needed to leave intact so that we would be able to get the box completion gem after we were done here. I've gone ahead and left those boxes intact so that we'll be able to get that gem as soon as we're done here. All things considered, this death route isn't that bad because this is actually the short, one of the shortest in the game. Yeah, I definitely don't recommend trying to shoot that one while on a moving platform. That's a good way to get yourself killed. So feel free to shoot that enemy right there if you want to. Me, I'd like to see if I can get through without using it as much as possible. It's nothing against the fruit bazooka, just personal preference. And yeah, there's our gem that I guess I didn't see in the middle of the plat platform there, but whatever. And here is the exclamation box that fills in all of those outlying crates that we saw the first time we went to Gone Tomorrow. We're going to be seeing those now. Anyway, we hop onto the green gem. And it's actually going to send us backwards into the level. Here's the arrow crate that we needed to leave intact so that we would be able to reach this higher uh, outlying crate. We bounce on it. Of course, even if you did break this thing, you could probably just get up there with a double jump, or you can just shoot it with your gun. And as for the other crate, well, that one required us to leave one of the TNT crates intact. So let's quickly head on over there and take that out, too. And here it is. But once again, even if you didn't... Even if you took out this TNT crate the first time, you can also just shoot the things. But we'll go ahead and use the TNT to break the other one. And there you go. From here on out, it's pretty much just the same level as before, so I'll see you at the warp room. And so with that, two more gems to add to our collection. Yes, it was a gem of palooza so crash dance it away. As for Flaming Passion, well, it was a pretty average level in my opinion. 
it has its share of outtakes, we'll check those out. And be sure to join us next time for level 24. Oh boy, it's Mad, Mad Bombers, the other plane flying level in this game. Yep, we'll deal with that next time. See you then. Uh, uh sure, just walk right into it. They don't actually kill you. They'll just kind of bounce you around like the swordsmen do when you they're not... Oh! A little too far forward. So you're going to want... Oh! Well, that could have gone better. Anyway, be mindful of the... I don't know what that sound was, but hopefully we don't hear it again. Other than that, no. Okay, never mind. Let's keep moving. Well, that didn't pan out how I wanted it to. You only have a brief moment to take them out, so... I thought for sure I'd cleared that. Plenty of arsonists around this time. And... The I have no comment for that. I shouldn't have been standing there. Simple as that. So, they could have put boxes here, and that would have made the box completion gem for this level a little more challenging. Ugh. But that's neither here nor there. As this level would... Well, chopped and fallen. At least that didn't count as two deaths, that's all I gotta say. Oh, my embarrassment. That means less of an opening to take them out. Also, fun fact about these pot guys. They can be deadly in the wrong place. Not again. 